Jeremiah chapter number 19. We're going to look at several things in this chapter, but I'll just read the first four verses to begin. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, Go and get a potter's earthen bottle, and take of the ancients of the people, and the ancients of the priest, and go forth unto the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is by the entry of the east gate, and proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee. And say, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, the which whosoever heareth his ears shall tingle, because they have forsaken me, and have estranged this place, and have burned incense in it unto other gods, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and have filled this place with the blood of innocence. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. Our hearts have been blessed. We thank you for the good testimonies. God, thank you for the good reports of hearing and answering prayer. God, we are so grateful you're God that answers prayer. We're thankful that you're a God that's still able to move mountains. We're thankful, God, that nothing is impossible with thee. And you still say, call upon you, and you will hear us and answer us and do great and exceeding and mighty things that, Lord, we just can't even fathom the greatness and the power of Almighty God. So, Father, as we come to you tonight, we ask you to help us, help our understanding. Help us, Lord, to be illuminated from the Word of God. And then, God, help us to realize all around us there's a world not ready to meet God. And God, I pray you'd help us to shine His lights, help us to make a difference. Help us, Lord, to overcome our faults and our failures and our shortcomings. Uh, and God, help us to seek to put Thee first in our lives. Uh, and God, certainly help us to do all we can to win as many people to Christ as we can before it's everlasting too late. God, I pray if there's any amongst us tonight who's unsaved, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. I pray for the saints of God that you'd edify them, you'd strengthen them, you'd encourage them. And God, you'd certainly revive them. And God, you'd do great things for them and through them in this day. Father, be with all those that are sick, be with those that are providentially hindered, be with those that, Lord, are... Uh, uh, have been exposed and those that have COVID and God just help them God be with our nation Lord uh, 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 God uh, you, you in your goodness and your grace you don't have to be good to America America certainly hasn't uh, sought after God but God we pray in your wrath you'd remember mercy and God we pray that we'd see revival break out in our country and we'd see America become a Christian nation again Father I pray would you be with our leaders I pray you'd save them and I pray that, God, you'd do a work in their lives. Uh, now, Father, I do pray that, Lord, uh, you'd help us this night to ever draw close to Christ. And we'll thank you for it. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. Uh, I, I see our nation's righteousness is much like the righteousness in Jeremiah's day. Our nation is a shadow of what she used to be. Our nation... For as evolved as we have become, has really fallen far from God. There are things being named in America today that I would have never dreamed when I was a young man that things like that would go on. And I know what happens as uh, 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 saved people, as children of God, uh, as folks that read your Bible, pray, and come to church... Uh, try to live a clean life. Uh, uh, what happens to you is the same thing that happens to a lot of preachers. Uh, 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 we just kind of end up in a bubble. We don't really fathom everything that's going on in this wicked world. Uh, we don't walk in those circles. We don't think in those circles. Uh, we don't live in those circles. And, and we don't understand how bad things really are uh, outside our address and outside uh, 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 the very uh, uh, streets that we live on. I'd have never dreamed that America would be in a position where she murders babies like she does. Mm -mm. 
mm, can I say something? America will pay for every child that's been aborted. I never would have dreamed that the drug scene would be so bad that it's not uh, just in certain parts of the country. Uh, it's not just in the slums and the ghetto areas. Uh, it's on Main Street in America. There's very few families in America that has not been affected uh, by some form of illicit drugs. But friends, we're, here we are. Hmm? Uh, the media doesn't talk about it anymore. But heroin and fentanyl and all kinds of even prescription drug is, my dear friends, being uh, overtaken our families in our country. I got to thinking about, would you ever dream that in America there'd be a human trafficking problem? Where people are being kidnapped and forced into slavery in America. Hmm? Where the hierarchies and the multi-billionaires... Uh, find it a pleasure in being involved in human trafficking. If you don't believe that, that Epstein case was sealed so you couldn't see who was involved because uh, uh, people that uh, have bank accounts a whole lot bigger than ours were involved in it and they didn't want to be exposed. I'm telling you, America has went awry. We've got to a place in America where we don't know what's right anymore, we don't know what's wrong anymore. America's got so smart, she's got stupid. You know, I, I'm not the brightest uh, light bulb in the bunch. Mm, but, you know, when I come up, he meant he and she meant she. Now they're inventing pronouns for what they are. I got news for you. You're either he or she. And some want to be a he, she. And that ain't what God made. God made male and female. And males can't have babies. But we live in America where now anything goes but what's right. Hmm? It's absolutely crazy. It wasn't Jeremiah's day. People were wicked too. And I didn't touch on all the wickedness going on in America. We'd be here all night. Mary's already about half asleep. Let me show you a few things from the verses of what's going on in Israel's day and in this chapter, and then we'll bring a thought tonight. I want you to first notice, first of all, that God uses an object lesson through the prophet Jeremiah to Israel. Notice, first of all, in verse number one, he says, go get a vessel. He says, get a potter's earthen bottle. He's going to show them how fragile life really is. Friends, if the last two years haven't showed you anything, you ought to understand how fragile life and health and how fragile truth really is. Notice, if you will, the verdict that God lands on Israel. Verse number 3 says, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place. Notice God didn't say, I'm going to allow evil to come. God said, I'm bringing evil. Uh, I will bring evil upon this place. Uh, the which whosoever heareth his ears shall tingle, uh, because they've forsaken me. They've estranged this place and burned incense in it to other gods. He has pronounced a verdict against them. And can I say, if a judge pronounces a verdict, you can appeal it. But when God pronounces a verdict, friend, it's his final say. Now why did God announce this verdict of evil against them? Well, you've got to see their viciousness. Look again in verse number 4. The last part of the verse says, You've filled this place with the blood of innocence. Verse 5, they have built also high places of Baal, look at this clause, to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. Mm, can I say, verse 6, therefore behold the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall no, no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. They were burning their children 
as a sacrifice to a false god. And God says, now it's going to be called the valley of slaughter. They were going to pay. Notice, if you will, the void. Look at verse 7. And I will make void the council of Judah and Jerusalem in this place. Now, I'm not going to get off on politics tonight much. But all that crowd in Washington, they are void of common sense. You know why? Because God has seared their minds. They have been so wicked for so long, God has given them over to their wickedness, and they are void of understanding. Mm -mm. The so-called president said this week, when he addressed the, the nation, that he's done a good job. Well, he has done a good job of ruining the country in a year. Huh? I'm telling you, these folks are void of understanding and common sense. And it's not only the left side, it's the right side too. Every one of them are given over to wickedness. You know why? Because they don't seek the Lord and His counsel. They really have forgotten they're not elites. They're to be a government for the people and by the people. They work for us, but they don't come and ask us what we want done in Washington. They line their pockets with monies from lobbyists, and they live the high life, and they think they're getting away with it. I remind you, the Bible says, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Speaking of that, look at his vengeance in verse 7. And I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies, by the hands of them that seek their lives, and their carcasses will I give to, to be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beast of the earth. And I will make this city desolate and a hissing. Everyone that passeth thereby shall be astonished and hiss because of all the plagues thereof. Look at verse number 8. <coughs> I mean, verse number 9. I mean, this is, this is bad. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, uh, and they shall eat every one the flesh of his friend that in the siege and the straightness uh, uh, wherewith their enemies, uh, and they that seek their lives shall straighten them. I mean God, when he throws the hammer down, he throws it down. Can you imagine being in such terror that you're eating your own children to keep from starving to death? Brother Charlie? There ain't much meat on your kids' bones. You'd go hungry. Huh? There ain't much pickings on Joseph there. <clears throat> You're in good shape, Joseph. Huh? But can you imagine being in such bad shape that you look at your darling and say, Well, <laughs> your dinner tonight. Now notice the validity. Look at verse number 10. Now he's told Jeremiah to preach this message to the ancients, the elders of the city, the elders of the priest. He wasn't a popular preacher, was he? Verse number 10, this is what God tells Jeremiah now. Then shalt thou break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee, and shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people and this city, as one breaketh a potter's vessels that cannot be made whole again, and they shall bury them in Tophet, till there be no place to bury. The sad reality is, the ancients didn't believe Jeremiah. And read on a few more chapters, and this very terror happens to them. Isn't it amazing how God has sent message after message after message to his men through the generations, and people don't take it to heart? I'm going to preach a little, a little thought out of verse 11. 
where he says, Even so will I break this people and this city as one breaketh a potter's vessel. I'm going to give you a little thought on broken vessels tonight. Broken vessels. And I want you to understand this because there are people that you work with. There are people that you live in the same community with. There are people that you go to school with who are broken vessels. They're just living and existing and waiting for the judgment of God to fall on them. Now keep that in your mind. They're broken vessels. They're living like they're living because they haven't had a Jeremiah stand up in front of them and tell them the right way to go. Notice something, some things about broken vessels. First of all, they have corrupt natures. Again, in verse number 4, these folks were burning incense unto other gods and they uh, uh, had filled uh, 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 this area with the blood of innocence. They had slain children uh, in that area. They had corrupt natures. Uh, can I say folks that are unsaved have a corrupt nature? Uh, they're living... Uh, uh, naturally, they are sinning because they were born sinners. Uh, uh, they like sin. Uh, they choose to sin. Uh, and my dear friends, until they're confronted with the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and come under conviction and get saved, they're going to live corruptly because that's all they know. They're broken vessels. Mm. Sin or sin. Before you met the Lord, that's what you had, a corrupt nature. You lived in sin. They have corrupt natures. Can I say something else about broken vessels? They have condemning practices. I mean, it's horrible to think that they were offering up their children as sacrifices uh, unto false gods. But can I say all around us, uh, people are offering up their children as sacrifices. Uh, uh, some of them, it's a sacrifice to a game system. Uh, some of them, it's a sacrifice uh, 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 to let them go and run the streets because they uh, 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 get in their way of them living in their corruptness. Uh, uh, some of them, just, uh, 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 they offer them up to everything that is out there, uh, uh, trying to let their kids uh, uh, become popular, become involved in this or that. Uh, 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 they are offering them up for all kinds of things other than bringing them to God and raising them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Uh, I preach a revival. I won't mention the church. I've preached there several times over the years. And there's one particular family. You never know if they're going to be there or not. Because all they do is run their children all over the country, getting them involved in all kinds of things. The children don't even want to be involved, but they do that, and they're offering up their children as sacrifice when they could be sitting in hearing the truth. And can I say they have condemning practices? You remember Matthew chapter number 7, when folks come to the Lord at Judgment Day, and they'll tell the Lord all that they did in His name. Some say they... They prophesied in his name. They did many wonderful works in his name. And he says, depart from me, ye that worked iniquity. I never knew you. It's a dangerous, dangerous game when you play with spiritual matters. Mm. There's a lot of folks have condemning practices. They will say they love the Lord, but their life says something totally different. We're talking about God's chosen people in Jeremiah chapter 19. These were chosen above all peoples in the world, and yet they're living well and far beneath their privileges. They had corrupt natures. They had condemning practices. They had counterproductive worship. Look in verse 13. Look what it says. And the houses of Jerusalem, the houses of the kings of Judah, shall be defiled as a place of Tophet, because of all the houses upon whose roofs they have burned incense uh, unto all the host of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto other gods. Uh, there are folks who will come to church on Sunday and sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. But the rest of the week, their life sings, I have friends in low places. Hmm? They have counterproductive worship. Do you, do you know why there are some folks as known as Sunday morning only? 
preachers call them smoes. Sunday morning only. They make time for God Sunday morning only. You know why? They're trying to ease their conscience. Well, I went to church. Can I say Jesus doesn't want your seat in the pew? Jesus don't want your tide check. Jesus don't want to, you're now I lay me down to sleep prayer. You know what Jesus wants? You. And when he's got you, you're not a smo. They have counterproductive worship. Hmm? Jesus quoted Isaiah and Ezekiel. He says, with your lips you do honor me, but your heart is far from me. They have counterproductive. What good is your worship if it doesn't honor Jesus? And true worship that honors Jesus comes from your heart, not your lips. And I say something else about broken vessels. They have a condemned end. Verse number 11, a text verse again, he says, Jeremiah should say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people, and this city is one that breaketh a potter's vessel that cannot be hold, made whole again, and they shall bury them in Tophet, here it is, till there be no place to bury. They had a condemned end. Wasn't a whole lot of grace there, Brother James. You see, there comes a point where you'll cross God's deadline, and he'll say, enough's enough, and that's it. Now, if we stopped right there, this would be a rough message for Wednesday night. Wouldn't it? There's not a whole lot of grace and glory in here. One of the greatest words in the Bible is a little conjunction called but. So what are, you, what are you getting at, preacher? Broken vessels, they have corrupt natures. They have condemning practices. They have counterproductive worship, and they have a condemned end. We know that. But they also had a compassionate messenger. Look at verse number 1. Thus saith the Lord, Go and get an earthen bottle. Pot, uh, uh, get a potter's earthen bottle. Take the ancients of the people and... Listen, they had a compassionate messenger. You know what Jeremiah did? He went. He told them the truth. He shared with them what God shared with him. He was compassionate enough to tell them their circumstance and their situation. He was trying to open their eyes to what was going on around them. He was trying to let them know what God thought about them. They had a compassionate messenger. And the whole point of the whole message tonight, if you don't get anything else, get this. They did have a chance to repent. Go back to chapter 18. Let me show you something. Look at verse number 4. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it? If that nation against whom I have pronounced to turn from their evil... I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. They did have a chance to repent. Uh, 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 the broken vessel is a continuation of the potter's clay. Uh, and he's telling them, uh, you are a broken vessel, uh, but I've got good news. God said, if you repent, uh, if you repent of your evil, he'll repent of the evil he's uh, uh, designed for you. Uh, they do have an opportunity to repent. Uh, what you and I need to be is compassionate messengers uh, we need to let them know uh, yes uh, you're a broken vessel but I know the potter uh, and the potter can take the clay uh, and he can remold it and remake it uh, he can change your life uh, 
that your life is useless now, but it can be of all great importance. Uh, you can be a vessel of God, a vessel of honor. Uh, God can change your life. Uh, God can do great things for you. He does have grace for you. Uh, God is a present help in time of need, uh, and He cares about you. Uh, you don't have to die. You can live. You don't have to be destroyed. You can have life more abundantly. You don't have to let those things control you. Jesus can break the chains. Mm, they do have help tonight. And it's in the person of Jesus Christ. You and I need to be compassionate messengers. We need to let them know that God cares. God sees their wickedness, but He still cares. And God will change their life. God will make a difference in their life. God will remold them and reshape them. Aren't you glad if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature? Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. We can start at the back pew and work our way front or start in the front pew and work our way back. And people can begin to testify uh, that they were too once were broken. But God came by their way. Uh, they too were in a pit, uh, but the mighty hand of God reached way down, uh, pulled them up, put them on a solid rock, uh, put praise unto God in their mouth, uh, and established their goings. Uh, why? Because God is a God of love and a God of grace. Make no mistake, He's a God of judgment, but He's long-suffering. And Jeremiah chapter 18 and 19 shows us the long-suffering of God. God, off betimes, sent prophets to them, warning them, warning them, wooing them, wooing them, giving them a space of grace to repent. Unfortunately, Jeremiah's day, they didn't believe it. And they didn't repent. And can I say in our day, many don't believe it. And they don't repent. But keep showing them mercy. Keep showing them compassion. Keep telling them Jesus loves them. Keep telling them Jesus saves. Jesus saves. The masses may not come to Him, but if one comes to Him, it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Keep letting them know they don't have to be a broken vessel any longer. Aren't you glad God didn't leave you where He found you? Hmm? Well, aren't you glad he winked at your ignorance? Uh, aren't you glad he could reach farther down than you could reach up? Hmm? Uh, you know, folks say just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. When you couldn't pull yourself up by your bootstraps, he could pull you up out of the, out of the pit you was in? Hmm? That's him. Hmm? I bless his holy name. Yeah, we live in an insane, wicked world. America has gone off the rails. I still love America. I'm still for America. I don't love everything she's involved in right now. And listen, in all my travels, i got good news for you. Most Americans are not identifying with what you see on the news. Hmm? They're not. Hmm? I don't know how many places I've been the last year, and I don't know how many places I'm going to end up going this year. But everywhere I go, I see folks that are fed up with everything we're being fed. So there is hope. You know where hope comes from? From folks like you and me. That just stands up and say, Jesus loves you. Jesus cares. You can make a difference. You can make a difference in your community. It just takes one to make a difference. Will you be the one? Jeremiah sought to make a difference. The next chapter, they did. They really didn't like him. You all have heard me preach out of Jeremiah 20, I don't know how many times. But the truth of the matter is, in the end, Jeremiah was rewarded as if the whole nation would have repented because he did what God said. Don't be a broken vessel for God. Be a worthy vessel for God. Hmm. When it's all said and done, if you're true to God, He'll be true to you. 
and he'll treat you as if you won the whole world if you was just faithful. God help us to be faithful. Let's all stand. Maybe you've got somebody on your heart you want to come pray for tonight. Maybe you need to come say, God, who can I, who can I can tell that you'll change their life? Maybe he spoke to you about something in your own life. Maybe tonight you just want to tell him you love him. Maybe tonight you don't know him. You want to come to know him. That's what this invitation's for. Brother Clint, you come, get a song ready. Him and Miss Renee's picking out a song. A lot of folks in the altar. Let's pray. Father, we sure do look around this sin cursed world, and Lord, there are times that we are upset, and there are times that we're disgusted, and Lord, I can't imagine how disgusted you are. But Lord, I do pray in your wrath you'd remember mercy. God, I pray you'd open doors first to tell folks about how much you care for them. And God, I pray we'd see many come to Christ. Lord, I know that there are folks going to hell by the droves. God, help our church to be a stop sign on the road to hell for them. Help them, Lord, to have to deal with Jesus because of our church just shining the light. Because of our church just sending forth a good old gospel message. God, there are churches all across this country and across this globe that's still standing for truth. God, bless them, help them to be beacons to their communities. God, lay people on our hearts that we can reach for your glory. God, open doors for us to tell folks about the greatness of Jesus. And God, whatever these folks are praying about in the altar, help them, God. Bless them and bless this invitation now. Well, thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.